Hyper Hippo. <laughs> Adventure Communist. Yeah, Ruski TV. Hello, my friends. Today we are diving into a rabbit hole. The rabbit hole of Hyper Hippo. What will we find today? We make a big splash. Hyper Hippo Games is a premier game studio in British Columbia, Canada. We believe that putting our team and players first are the keys to making great games. Let's read the story. The Hippo's Journey We strongly believe that humility and an appetite for getting things wrong is a big part of being a hippo. Here's why. We've learned a lot by making bad assumptions. We've also learned a lot by listening to our players and by always chasing our craziest ideas. Our story proves that nothing is ever guaranteed, except that you're always going to learn something by trying. I honestly could not agree less. Or more. That's very true. We strongly believe that humility and a yes, we already know. We build games that provide deep value for people's time and money. Everyone at Hyper Hippo is a passionate gamer. It comes with the territory. That means that the games we make stay true to what we believe. I mean, to what we would want to see as players in the games we play. Especially when we're playing our own games. We're often caught arguing through decisions as a team. But the goal is always the same. Give the player something rewarding and something worthy of the time they're spending in our games. I can see that. Adventure Communist and Capitalist makes me feel like a time worth spending worth time. We're going to celebrate failure just like we celebrate success. I need to learn from that think we all do. Our story highlights for us that failure is a very necessary part of success. The key to failure is taking the time to learn from what went wrong in order to make plans for what to do right next time. It's a key part of investing in our people, our games, and our culture. It's important to know that the rest of the studio has your back and believes in you when things aren't going as planned. It's also important to understand your failures in order to fully appreciate what you do when you do make something great. There is nothing better than building something that players love. I don't know how I miss reading all this stuff. I'm, I'm, see, I'm seeing things. We are strong teams with great chemistry. Our teams come first in everything we do here. We believe that people work well together and who drive themselves to make something awesome have a greater chance of succeeding. The next step is to just give them what they need and step out of the way. Our culture is one of our strongest values and every new person we hire meets everyone in the studio before they join our team. We work by testing our assumptions with experiments. This is a lot to read. So bear with me. Making video games means that you have to make decisions very quickly, and the rules change daily. We hand our best ideas over to the players and measure their results constantly. That sounds fun. I like analyzing. I do that with my YouTube channel, hehe. <laughs> That can mean predictive analysis and complicated graphs and charts, but more often than not it means jumping into the forums and just talking with players firsthand. Our greatest measure of success is seeing a player love a game we've made, and reading their positive reviews and new ideas for where to go with the game next. In quotes, Your idea is never as important as your player's reactions to it. Listening to and measuring those reactions can be the difference between the next big hit or another near miss. 
take take notes, you game developers out there. Hyper Hippo can teach you a thing or two. Oh, I like this art. It's an angry looking cat. Chapter 1. Starting with what we knew. Success breeds success, right? We'd love to tell you we nailed everything on the first try and that Hyper Hippo is a simple success. We can't. The reality is something much more chaotic, the ultimately much more valuable as a part of our studio's evolution. I, uh, my brain is frozen. Club Penguin was a big hit, really big. It started as a small idea in Kelowna, BC and quickly spiraled out of control into something massive. Disney got involved in 2007 and the rest is history. In 2012, Lance Prieb, one of Club Penguin's three founders, started Hyper Hippo. So Hyper Hippo was founded, founded by the same guy that, one of the guys that founded Club Penguin. I bet a lot of you didn't know that, did you? Ready to set a veteran group of game makers onto a new type of strategy game using the Mech Mice brand. It was a large endeavor. Take the best people, point them at something good, and away they go. We had data, vision, and lots of other industry buzzwords. Success felt inevitable. Success was definitely not inevitable. We playtested with players everywhere, polishing our levels and sharpening our tools. Did the game make sense? Did people know how to play? The game was full of good ideas, but wasn't getting the popularity it needed to be successful. Whew. As the team's experiments and revisions went from weeks to months, Lance took a mental step back. Club Penguin hadn't started as one big idea. It had been a series of small ideas, individually tested and then added together to make something great. I mean, greater than the sum of its parts. We'd love to pretend... <laughs> we would love to pretend that we had it all figured out and that Hyper Hippo is a simple success. We can't. I think we already heard that. I guess they just put it in quotes. We're going into the small details here. This is a rabbit hole after all. In the winter of 2013, our Mech Mice game still hadn't found success. As a new game studio with no big wins behind it, this could mean death. Lance came to us with a new offer. He held out the keys to the studio and offered us six months as a final chance to go back to our roots risk the entire future of the studio and come up with a great new idea that could be validated quickly. We were in charge, but we had to put players first, test often, and fail bad ideas fast. No pressure. We grabbed the keys and got to work. And that's some dope graphics. I wonder if this game still exists. Mice vs. Bugs, the ultimate clash. Wait, I'm guessing that, yeah, that's the end of the chapter 1. Chapter 2. Going from 0 to 1 again. Starting something new is hard, be it a studio or a new game idea. In this case, we had the pressure of both. Save the studio by making something great. I don't, yeah, I can't, I'm not a good reader. Sorry, guys. Also, we only have a handful of people and no budget beyond our own skills and time spent. Dot, 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 okay. Game ideas flew everywhere. Mech Mice was a great idea, but it hadn't been validated early enough. How could we test new ideas? Only smaller and faster. Out of this period, we used a lot of the lean management concepts used to run new companies in order to help build our new game ideas. The audience came first. Data was king. The audience just didn't always show up, but that was an easier pill to swallow when we had 
when the game idea is being tested stayed small and took less time to build. Failures came fast, but failure was, and still is, a necessary part of building something amazing. Yes, indeed. Hey. Hey, we all go through failures, yes. <laughs> Some more than others. One designer on our team had an oddball idea. Some of our team would have just called it bad at the time. So bad, in fact, that despite all of the games being built, no team members would give the idea a second look. Having the keys to the studio meant there was no outsourcing or teams stuck being told what to work on next. But the designer believed he had something worth pursuing, so he cracked open some programming tutorials, rolled up his sleeves, and started building the idea himself. And then we have the quotes. We read that earlier. <sighs> Progress barred the game was basically just a menu with progress bars. Click a button, see a progress bar go up, click another button. The team started playing as a test and kept playing through work days and weekends. The bad idea wasn't that bad after all. The team rallied around this surprising new prototype and turned the small idea into an only slightly larger full game with a new look and new name Adventure Capitalist. Launched on Congregate.com in May of 2014. Did you guys know that? I bet you didn't. Nobody ever looks into the details. But details are key to success. Chapter 3. What's bad mean anyway? When Adventure Capitalist first hit the web, we launched it quite quickly on half a dozen web portals. After all, the game showed early signs of success, but the goal still remained that we experiment often to test new ideas. At this stage in the game, it meant launching the game to as many different audiences as we could. Congregate's web portal was immediately one of our biggest success. The players there just got Adventure Capitalist. The team at Congregate was quick to reach out to us and get involved during the early days as both sides puzzled over how such a simple game could be so popular so quickly. A lot of arguments went back and forth over how to improve the game but we all aligned on what came next. Congregate published Adventure Capitalist with us on iTunes and Google Play in February of 2015. I think that's around, no, uh, I think around, started playing around two, 2016. I played it when it was way, way early. I wonder if they mentioned anything about the PlayStation version. <sighs> on we go. Both mobile platforms featured us on their front pages at launch, and like our start on Congregate's website, we found ourselves in a familiar, uncomfortable spot. Players were flooding in and the game was doing way better than we would ever expected. Only this time, we had some ideas from the lean days of Hyper Hippo and the game's success on the web. Congregate met the rush of new players with additional marketing plans while we focused on adding new planets and time-limited events. The goal was to offer players something worth sticking around for and something worth investing a lot of time into. Our lean principles were great for proving that our bad idea might not be so bad after all. And now the demands were crystal clear. We needed to grow our game's success into something we could build a studio around. It was a far cry from the six months of planned failures we evolved out of the year before. Damn, I didn't know reading was this tiring. <laughs> I'm out of breath. Bro. Oh, what is going on? Please, please stop. Okay. 
Our flagship title, Adventure Capitalist, keeps on growing. Chapter 4. The recipe for success keeps changing. As time went on, our team hit its stride with Adventure Capitalist, both in growing it on mobile with Congregate and in repeating that success by bringing it to weird new platforms. After all, mobile had been a brave new world for this idle game, so why not elsewhere? We broke new ground on Steam in March 2015, hot on the heels of our mobile debut. We weren't a flashy PC game, but what made the game so popular on the web translated well to the new platform. We ventured out onto consoles, launching on PS4 in August 2016 and had to figure out how to make the game fun to play with a controller for the first time. I gotta say, it's pretty fun on the PlayStation. I enjoy it. You guys should check it out too, if you haven't already. I'm actually playing it 24-7 now. <laughs> Even more than I do on mobile. Okay. We launched new versions on Facebook three different times, all to new platforms and as new experiments. If the goal is to keep finding new audiences, we push ourselves to shine a flashlight into every dark corner we can. And our good bad game idea has reached well over 40 million players worldwide as a result. So Adventure Capitalist was a big success. But it wasn't always that way. That's not to say that lean game designs is a silver bullet or that our success and experiments created a paramount recipe for success. Too much success. Things change constantly and some of our best good ideas still didn't validate when we put them out into the world. We took on exciting projects with big brands in 2015, joining forces with the creators of RuneScape and of Hello Kitty. We launched experiments, talked with the players, and read the data. Excuse me. We failed, we learned, and we tried again. We learned a ton about the people who love these brands, but not quite how to create an experience that met the high standards we'd set for ourselves. What our lean process has taught us is that failure is a very necessary part of building something awesome. No assumption should go untested, and it's rare you'll get something right the very first try. So we all have something to learn here. There's something humbling in there, that your idea is never as important as your players' reactions to it, and that listening to and measuring those reactions can be the difference between the next big hit or another near miss. It's that combination of luck, intuition, and hard evidence evidence that keeps game making so exciting. All of that requires player feedback to succeed. So as Lance would say, ship it. <clears throat> this this is probably where it gets interesting. We got our supreme comrade. Chapter 5. Power to the people. Actually, wait, let's go back and talk about this. All of that requires player feedback to succeed. So if you have any complaints about a game, you gotta leave your feedback, give your opinion, and not just complain. <laughs> Let them know they're looking to improve. All game companies, anything, any product is always looking to improve. And they need your feedback to do that, or to do so. So, don't be afraid to give your opinion. On to chapter 5, Power to the People. I should have probably separated this into chapters. Because this is going to be a long video. People are the heart of our studio. Our, our players make our work so worthwhile. And every piece of positive feedback, or particularly weird negative one, let us know we're still heading in the right direction. What we believe that makes us special 
is that we've come to think of everything we do as an experiment. The more we experiment, the more we fail, and the closer we get to a big win. We use more data than ever before, talk to players constantly, and keep an eye on the horizon for any big new opportunities coming up. If we can't say we hire experts directly, we can say that we invest in our people to turn them into experts. We want to be something worth getting excited about for the people that come to work every day and for the people who play our games every day. We're working hard at both and are proud of being both. New ideas remain a way of life here, whether building up a prototype or chasing a bigger idea in smaller pieces. We share feedback and riff off each other daily. It isn't enough to just default to making Adventure Capitalist 2. We launched Adventure Communist with Congregate on mobile in November 2017. Yeah, November, that's, that's my birth month. No wonder I connect to it so, so much. A brand new experience and a completely different kind of experiment than what Adventure Capitalist is. Communist also gives us a chance to write new jokes, although we're still not sure the capitalist ones were any good. We shuffle and challenge each other to build excitement around new ideas like this, and strong teams form around team members, opting in to a new game as it grows. Good and bad ideas don't count so much as interesting experiments and chances to prove ourselves wrong. The players tell us what works or not. That's where you come in. Play our games or come build them with us. Be an expert, be a leader. The sudden failures and unexpected success of Hyper Hippo prove that there is no perfect solution to the problems we're trying to solve. But we do know that keeping people at the heart of our work is a surefire way to keep challenging ourselves to be better, work together more, and make the best decisions for our team and players. Always. Have a game issue? Our support staff is here to guide you. We pride ourselves on working closely with our players. Have a question or concern? Right this way. Yeah, <laughs> we have the... Oh, what? There's a random bear amongst all the hippos. It's the outcast. It's me, the Russian bear. The outcast. I'm kidding. So that's the story of Hyper Hippo. What is Hyper Hippo? That's what it is. Support your needs. At Hyper Hippo, we really care about our players. Our first objective is to make really great games, but equally important is great customer service. So if you have an issue, come here and let them know. So, this is the first part of the rabbit hole, the Hyper Hippo rabbit hole. Thank you for watching. If you watch to the end, I appreciate you. We appreciate, I mean, Hyper Hippo appreciates you. And yes, keep on keeping on. Keep on playing Adventure Communist or Adventure Capitalist or both. I don't know. Make your choice. Download one today. Goodbye.